Super Mario 3D World is definitely one of my favorite Mario game ever. I've beaten this game so many times and I even finished it with every characters to get my 5 stars ranking on the menu screen. Heck yeah! So I've been watching Sieve Gaming's video on how to beat new Super Mario Bros U without touching a single coin and it made me wonder if it would be possible to do the same in Super Mario 3D World. I know Mero SMM is trying to do the same task and I've spoken with this guy before but besides him and I, I haven't seen anyone that tried this on YouTube so far. Basically the rules are as follow. You must not collect any coins at all. You see that little zero on the top left? It must stay like that forever. The thing is, there's a couple of game mechanics in Super Mario 3D World that actually are making this challenge quite difficult. Basically, if you jump on enemies, you automatically collect a coin. If an enemy is standing near the flagpole as you grab it, it turns into a coin that you automatically collect. You gotta be careful for those ninja coins that are coins that appear out of nowhere. Plus, there are some invisible blocks that you want to avoid at all costs. Basically, this game wants to give you coins, so it's not gonna be an easy task. To progress in some areas of Super Mario 3D World, you need to collect green stars, so we're gonna have to try to collect as many as we can as we go through the challenge. Some of the green stars are only able to be collected by grabbing some green coins, and those coins count in our coins total, so they're a no-go. Same thing for the red coins, you don't want to touch those. There's also a very annoying detail that won't really show up in the video, but I did have to deal with it. Basically, if you mess up and grab a coin by accident, you cannot just back out of the level or jump down a pit. The coin still counts in your total, so the only way of not having that issue is to open up the Wii U menu, close the software and launch it again, forcing you to see the loading screen over and over again. I also got a little bit paranoid as I was doing the challenge, so I made two copies of my save file just to make sure it's all Gucci. Now that everything has been explained, let's start this adventure and hopefully beat the whole game coinless. World 1-1 is pretty easy, you just need to make sure to avoid jumping on any enemies you encounter, but it's no biggie. World 1-2 is not hard, but it taught me some difficult life lessons. This is the part of the quest where I learned that if you don't see coins, you can still get coins. You see, in this bonus room, I threw a green shell and grabbed a green star. However, I still receive coins when leaving the bonus area, probably because the green shell was still moving and touched those coins. What a shame. I gotta be careful with that from now on. The ending flagpole can be a problem too if you don't get rid of the Koopa Troopas, so make sure you do, because remember, if an enemy is on screen when you touch the flagpole, it gives you coins. Remember you cannot jump on the Koopa or use the cat attack as it gives you a coin, so using a fire flower is the safest way to defeat that guy. In fact, having a fire flower with you is one of the most important thing in this whole run. World 1-A pits you against two charging chucks, but here's the thing, if you kill them by jumping on top of them or with a cat suit, you'll receive coins, so this is why you want a fire flower at all times. Defeating an enemy with a projectile power-up like the fire flower makes a coin pop up, but at least you don't grab it automatically. Keeping this in mind, this level is pretty easy. World 1-3 doesn't require any particular strategy, just avoid enemies, keep climbing with the cat suit and everything's good. World 1-4 is the first level where you get to ride Plessy. Plessy can actually jump on enemies without receiving coins, so don't be afraid to do it to collect more green stars. Oh, and just a tip here, if you're gonna try to avoid those pits to the right, don't go to the waterfall to the left, it's a trap full of coins. The rest of the level isn't particularly special. World 1-5 is next and at first I was afraid that pushing all those blue switches would kill those beetles and give me some coins. It does kill the beetles, but no coins are given, so we're good. The cannon at the end requires you to wait to make sure not to hit any of the coin rings, but it's pretty easy to do. The Captain Toad level in World 1 doesn't contain any coins, so it's 5 green stars that you can get without any danger really. With enough green stars in hands, the next level is 1-Bowser, and it doesn't feature any big problem. You just want to make sure to dodge the Goombas and wait for coins to disappear if you're aiming at getting the green stars. The battle against Bowser is straightforward as it contains no coins at all, and with that, World 1 is officially over and we still have zero coins. Yeah! 
World 2-1 has a golden pipe, which usually means you're going to get a shower of coins, so it's a no-go for me. The rest of the level is pretty easy, and I was dumb and got some coins on the moving platforms, but a second try was all that was needed to complete it with zero coins. World 2-2 features a couple of coins on the pink platforms that you'll want to dodge, but besides that, not much needs to be said, really. World 2-3 is the first level with Bob the Piranha Plant, who was just announced for Smash, by the way, so good job, guys, we made it, Bob is in! Since Bob loves to eat enemies and green stars, I was afraid he'd try to eat some coins too, but it seems Bob hates the taste of coins, so we're all good. This 2D section requires you to jump over some coins, which is pretty spooky, but it's not the biggest challenge you'll encounter. I was afraid Bob's big head would touch the coin there, so I left him to be sure. World 2-4 was a little bit scary because of coins on rotating platforms, but I had my trusty cat suit so I could climb on the walls and make sure not to hit any coins or any enemies. The pipe to get to the end of the level is surrounded by coins, which scared me at first, but it was an easy jump. To defeat the big Galoomba in World 2-A, a fire flower will do the trick. World 2 Dash Bucks is a little bit scary because you have 10 seconds to defeat enemies very quickly without collecting their coins, which can be quite a challenge. I can't really explain what happened there with the Koopa. It seems that I collected a coin when it fell down on the Koopa Trooper shell, despite me being all the way over there, which I don't really get why, so if anyone knows, just tell me in the comments, but whatever. The other enemies are not really tough, so it's an easy level. World 2-5 is up, and this one scared me a little bit, because you want to grab the double cherry to get the green stars, but having more Marios on screen definitely means more ways to grab a coin unintentionally, so be extra careful and you'll be good. This level doesn't have any tricky parts, so yeah. Now get ready for World 2- Tank. Oh boy, this one was fun. This level is an auto-scroller, which are just my favorites. Most of the wooden crates in this level contain a coin, so you'll need to avoid them at all costs. Here's the problem though, have you noticed how I got awarded a coin while minding my own business? Heck, I didn't even notice it at first and kept playing the level. After trying this again, I realized that this bullet bill was the one that did it. Yes, it doesn't matter if you blow up the crate or the bullet bill does, you still get a coin. So at this point, I realized I needed a way to stop the bullet bill from going to the crate easier said than done. You can block a bullet bill by standing in front of the cannon without getting a coin, but getting there before the cannon shoots the bullet bill is almost impossible. Trying to jump on a bullet bill will give you a coin for defeating it. I tried grabbing onto the crate as Cat Mario to block the bullet bill, but it was no use, it's just too fast. Jumping under the bullet bill will damage you, but won't stop the bullet bill, so it's no use too. I'm not gonna lie, I thought this would be the end of the coinless run at this point. But then I remembered that this game features touch controls that you can use to block enemies. And it does work on bullet bills. With that in mind, my plan seemed simple. Freeze the bullet bill as it leaves the cannon, put Mario in front of it and tank the damage. But that's easier said than done, because I was alone doing that, so holding down a bullet bill while moving and jumping requires way more fingers than I actually have. And there's these four coins next to the bullet bill, and touching those with the touchscreen will automatically pick them up. Great. I eventually managed to kinda do it, even though I grabbed the coin, but here's what happens next. While taking damage and flickering, a second bullet bill comes out of the cannon and hits the box off screen, giving you the coin. What am I supposed to do at this point? Well, here's what happened next though. If you hold down a bullet bill and wait for a second one to appear, they both explode together and give out no coins. I knew I was onto something at this point. I was filled with determination and here's what my solution ended up being. Hold down bullet bill number one, wait for bullet number two to destroy it, face bullet number three and tank the damage. This way I should be in the clear, but you know what? I still receive a coin, even though the box was out of the screen. Literally 45 minutes of trying this new strat later, I figured out how to do it. My strategy was actually good, but to make sure that both the coin box and the bullet bill despawns, I'll have to run as far away from it as possible. So I stop bullet 1 and 2, I tank bullet 3, I run all the way while stopping bullet 4 and 5, and tanking bullet 6 only to keep running as fast as I can to despawn everything. It sounds overly complicated. 
And trust me, it is. It was the biggest pain in the butt ever, but at least we can still go further on our quest. Defeating Boom Boom is pretty easy, and as long as you avoid this big circle of coin at the end, there's no biggie. Whew, World 2 is done, and I need a break. World 3 is up, and hopefully it won't be as tedious as that last level. World 3-1 is the first ice level, so you want to be careful not to slip on a coin by accident. Have a cat suit ready for World 3-2, because to avoid those coin and coin rings, you'll want to climb on the back wall, or you'll want to do a cat jump around the fence, which is a little bit tricky. World 3-3 is a haunted house, but it's not the most difficult level you'll play. Most of the coins can be easily avoided if you take your time. World 3-4 is pretty easy as it's so small, just grab some green stars, run to the end and that's it. You'll notice that sometimes I lose my cat suit and have it in the next level. I forgot to mention that I backtracked to World 1-1 and World 1-2 so many times during my playthrough just to grab back a cat suit and a fire flower. So if you're gonna attempt that, be ready to play these levels over and over again. World 3-A is a mini boss fight against Magikoopa, so just use the Fire Flower and you'll be done in no time. World 3-5 is an underwater level which will require you to make sure not to swim on any coins, but it's nothing special. World 3-6 is the famous Mario Kart level. The hardest part comes from having to run super fast and avoiding coins, but they're always in the center lane, so usually if you run close to the top or the bottom part of the track you should be okay. I had trouble with World 3-7 in this part, where you gotta slide down the wall to avoid the coin rings, cause I always fell down in the pit, but that's probably just because I'm an idiot. World 3-Captain Toad is just like the previous one, easy. World 3-Train was actually scary for me, it's an auto-scroller, it contains bullet bills and wooden boxes. At least this one's pretty easy, as the boxes do not contain any coins, yes! Pom Pom, just like Boom Boom, is quite easy to defeat. Jump on her three times and then run all the way to a corner and hide from those evil coins. And on that note, World 3 is done. Or is it? We still have World 3-B to go, which is a battle against Histocrat. Basically, to defeat this guy, you must jump on his head. And I found out that if you do a spin jump at the correct timing, you can usually get on his head and damage him. If that fails, just wait until he gets a plate that doesn't have any coins on it and use it to jump on the head. He's gone, and now World 3 is really done. World 4-1 is next. The first level is pretty easy as you can jump on those big ants without collecting any coins. The only difficult part for me was this one here where you're gonna climb on the wall to circle around the coins. Make sure to have a fire flower on you for the last part because you need to kill the ants before touching the flagpole to avoid receiving some coins. Have a fire flower ready for world 4-2 if you want to make it far, because you must defeat those piranha plants to proceed in the level, but make sure to avoid the 3 coins they drop when dying. There is this part where you can either go down underwater or up there. I tried going up first. Mm, bad idea. Everything was going smooth underwater until this part where I receive a coin despite not even touching it. Yeah, great. So for this part, you'd want to be Tiny Mario as his hitbox is smaller than normal Mario. As far as I know, this is the only possible way of going through that part without collecting a single coin. Once again, make sure to defeat the plant at the end to avoid receiving flagpole coins, and this one is done. 4-A is another minibus battle, but this one is easy, throw the boulder in the lava and that's it. These enemies don't give out coins, so no stress. World 4-3 is next and basically just requires you to time your jump like you would in a normal playthrough. Avoiding the coins is not a big deal. Pro tip, don't go in that pipe and do not hit that switch. Uh-oh. World 4-4 is pretty easy too, except for that last part at the end where you keep bouncing on that moving platform and there's a bajillion little beetles. Use a very precisely timed cat dive to avoid them all and you won't get any coins. I don't know if the trampoline at the end actually gives out coin when touching the flagpole, but I just didn't want to find out, so I threw it in the pit. 
World 4-5 doesn't have any tricky part whatsoever. Just like pretty much all level in this world so far, make sure to have the fire flower to defeat the enemy near the flagpole. Bye bye fishy bobkins. World 4 dash house can be tricky because of the time limit, but you can easily avoid all of the coins if you pay attention to where they are. I gotta admit that this part with the wooden bridge was actually very nerve wracking, but it can be done, trust me. 4 dash B is another mini boss, should we even talk about it? Use the fire flower. Next up comes 4 dash castle, and surprisingly enough, it's pretty easy. The only difficulty comes from collecting the green stars using those big boulders. You wanna make sure to carry them without accidentally touching a coin or a block. This world's boss doesn't give out any coins during the fight, so just fight him as you normally would. Just make sure not to stand next to the center of the arena after defeating the boss, and that's gonna be it. We are done with world 4. That was pretty quick. World 5-1 is up and this one has one really tricky jump. You see, in this level you need to collect those key tokens to open up the next section of the level. There's one token located on some clouds above these clear pipes. Sadly, you can't use those pipes as they contain coins, so you'll have to do this really precise jump here to land on the edge of the clear pipe and then jump on the cloud. I managed to do it two different ways. It was kind of lucky. I did it once with a spin jump and once with a very precise cat climb immediately followed by a jump. The second part of this level requires you to use Plessy to reach the end of the level. There's this ring of coins that is standing in the middle of the way. Jumping is a no-no, but if you bump on the enemy with Plessy, it will go away and you'll be clear to pass without touching the coin ring. Use the fire flower to defeat all enemies near the flagpole and your task is done. World 5 dash Captain Toad is once again pretty straightforward, so let's just not talk about it, whatever. World 5 dash 2 is surprisingly easy, but make sure to have a cat suit for this part. You see, there's a clear pipe here which you can't avoid without climbing on the walls. Besides that, it's an easy level. World 5-3 is really tiny and really easy. Just make sure to kill all of the enemies with a fire flower because if you don't, they will give you coins even if they're out of the view. Welcome to 5-4, Sprawling Savannah. At first, this level doesn't look really complicated. I mean, there are barely any coins, so it's not really a problem. Except, here's the thing. There's these ants that are coming out of those pipes, and even if you defeat them with a fire flower, they come back instantly. The problem is that next to the flagpole at the end, there are two pipes with ants coming out of them. Sadly, even if you defeat the ants and proceed to the flagpole as fast as you can, another set of ants comes out of the pipe and you get awarded coins for those. There's no way of getting rid of the cannon or preventing them from coming out of it, even with touch controls. I've tried so many ways of doing this level. Trying to have the cannon all the way to the left of the screen, up, down, I even asked my buddy Mero SMM for help, but sadly, the way this game is programmed, you'll always get a minimum of two coins in this level. I tried playing this with another player, having one kill a set of ants, while the other is grabbing the flagpole, only to have another set of ants killed by the first one, but alas, no matter what, I always get at least two coins. I'm not joking guys, I have tried this single level for over 5 hours. I'm not kidding, I spent an entire day doing that level over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. But the results always are the same. It really saddens me to officially say this today, but the answer to the question is no. No, it is not possible to complete Super Mario 3D World without collecting a coin. Because of the flagpole mechanic. You can't get rid of these ants and no matter what you do, no matter how far to the right you go, no matter how you tilt the camera, nothing works. Seriously, I'm pretty bummed down that this level was the one to end the run. Well, this was one heck of an adventure. Thanks to Mero SMM for trying to figure out a solution to that level. Sadly, we both tried, we both failed.
failed. I will link his channel at the end of the video so you can go check him out. He still does the other levels after this one, so if you're interested in knowing more about it, well, make sure to check him out. In the meantime, I don't know, just subscribe, like, do all that fun stuff, and tap the cards on screen right now for more videos. I'll see you in the next one.